Thanks for checking out Scotty's Hobbies. Today we're going to be replacing the pads and rotors on the rear of this 2007 Toyota Highlander with a four cylinder two wheel drive uh, set up on this vehicle. Here I'm removing the brake line, uh, the little retaining bolt that holds it up to your uh, strut. This is a 12 millimeter. I'm using a six point socket. I personally prefer to use six point sockets when at all possible. And of course, to get this job done, you will need a basics mechanic tool set, uh, torque wrenches, caliper compression tools. Everything will be found in the description below, or links for uh, everything used in this video will be found in the description below. So let's get this bolt off and uh, give us a little more wiggle room when we remove the caliper momentarily. Here on the back side of the rotor, we're going to be removing the caliper slider pins or the caliper bolts that hold it to the bracket. These are going to be 14 millimeter, again, six point sockets. If you can, I had to use a, a 12 point, I believe it was, and I didn't really like it. I think I switched by the end of the video back over to a six point socket. Remove the top and bottom bracket bolts. Take them out, set them off to the side. When you remove them, make sure your threads are nice and clean. Make sure if they were over tight that you're not going to be putting in a bolt that needs to be replaced and not getting the proper torque specifications when installing them when we're all said and done at the end. Again, while you're watching this video, make sure you like, subscribe, and share, and tell everybody that is maintaining their own vehicles about me. I probably have a video that covers their vehicle as well. When you remove these caliper slider pins, you're going to want to make sure they're nice and clean, free of debris, make sure they're not seized, and just look at them, make sure that they look normal. If they're discolored, that could be a sign of your brakes getting too hot. Uh, if they look fine, then we're just going to clean them off or loop. For now, we're going to set those slider pins off to the side in a fashion that we remember where the upper and lower is located. Grab your caliper and set it off to the side. Eventually, we're going to hang it up on the spring or that rear strut. But just set it off to the side for a second so we could get a brake pad out of the caliper housing. I'm going to use my caliper compression tool to do that just to get a little bit of leverage. When you remove the brake pad, make sure you take note of where the, um, what is it called, the uh, wear indicator is located. It will be a little metal pin on the side of the brake pad if there is one. Just make sure it's on the inboard or outboard pad when you remove it and install it the same way you removed it. Using the old pad, the bad pad, we're going to compress the piston back into the caliper. Before you do this, make sure you remove the cap off of the brake fluid reservoir. I'm not sure why I didn't catch a little video of that, but before I started this job, I did remove that cap. You can see we're going to push the piston all the way into the caliper. Think to uh, some editing. This goes a little bit faster than it really does. Not by much, but the, this whole process of compressing the piston doesn't take more than a minute and a half, two minutes. Now that the piston is completely pressed back into the caliper, I'm going to set the caliper up on the spring just so that there is no pressure being uh, put on that hose. So just set it up off to the side if you need to tie it up there or use a bungee cord or something to hold it up in place. Now that we have uh, your caliper up there, we're going to remove the caliper bracket. To do so, we're going to be using a 17 millimeter socket, again, preferably a six point socket. When we reinstall these bolts at the end, we are going to properly torque them down to a uh, factory specification. When you remove these, it doesn't really matter uh, which one they came out of when you put them back in. Just make sure you set them off to the side uh, to where you're not going to lose them. Double check the threads on these things. Again, just make sure everything looks clean. It makes it much easier to install. And if you see a problem now, it's hopefully the store still open, not too late, and you can go buy some more stuff if you need it. So when you take it apart, as you do, inspect it rather than inspecting it as you put it back together. You should inspect it as you put it back together as well, though. With the caliper bracket removed, you can take the rotor off. You can see this rotor is completely destroyed on the back side. It was metal to metal. Wasn't long, I'd say that's a day uh, and, and say about 15 miles of wear on it. This right here is your parking brake adjustment. If you set it up properly, your new rotor, you should make a hole or the hole should be lined up with that little hole on your hub so you can adjust the uh, parking brake without taking everything apart. 
I'll line that up at the end of the video as well. So make sure you stay tuned. When you purchase your pad kits, make sure you get a pad kit that has a hardware kit included. You can see the little hole on that rotor right there. It needs to be lined up with the hole in the hub so you can adjust that parking brake without removing this uh, rotor if you want. And you could also check the parking brake pads or shoes, I should say, through that little viewing window, uh, again, without removing the whole assembly to be able to get to those. We put new hardware on the caliper bracket. These make it so the uh, pad itself moves freely in and out. When the caliper decompresses after you push the brake, you want the pads to be able to easily slide off of the rotor instead of keeping friction on them and making your pads go bad faster and just putting more wear and tear on the vehicle that is unnecessary. So I always put new hardware on. This one needed a nice little whack to get it to set in place so that it, it clipped in place, I should say. For the slider pins, I'm using some synthetic brake grease. You, baby. you will find links in the description below to purchase the parts and tools shown in this video. So make sure you check those links out and use them if you can. If this video does help you out, make sure you comment below with the year, make, model, and vehicle that this vi video helped you on. And uh, let us know how it all went. Install both your upper and lower caliper bolts. Sorry, caliper bracket bolts into the hub. After you snug up the caliper bracket bolts, you are going to torque these 17 millimeter bolts down to 79 foot pounds of torque. That's 79 foot pounds of torque. If for some reason I'm off, please make sure you comment below with the right size bolt or the right torque specification. You will find links in the description below to purchase torque wrenches if needed as well. Make sure they're both properly torqued down before you move on. Now the, the brake caliper bracket is tight. We're going to go ahead and install the new pads. Make sure you take a good look at your pads and see if your wear indicator is on one or the other or if it should be on the inboard or outboard uh, side of your caliper bracket depending on how you took it apart. So when you were doing the disassembly, that's why it's important to make sure uh, you remember where everything was at. Some vehicles have your uh, brake wear indicator on the outer pad, some have them on the inner pad. I personally prefer them to be on the inner pad. With the new pads installed, grab the caliper itself off of the spring. We're gonna set it right over the pads into the bracket. Make sure there's nothing pinched or squished and grab your slider pins and again when you did your disassembly this is why it's important to make sure you took note of where your slider pins came out this here slider pin with the rubber uh, looks just fine it doesn't have any discoloration i cleaned it all up using a uh, dustless cloth before i'm lubing it up with my synthetic brake grease you will find links in the description for that grease as well be very liberal liberal <laughs> be very liberal with this brake grease. Um, you can have a little bit too much, but just wipe it off when you complete the installation process. You can see coming up, I do put a little bit too much on it and have to wipe it off as well. What you want to do is make sure these slider pins move in and out freely, that there's nothing hampering their movement, that they go in and out with no delays. And so that's what you're pretty much looking for. This one looks pretty good, so I'm going to wipe off the excess grease, wipe it on my pants. Do your best to make sure your threads are cleaned up. I wouldn't put any lubricant such as um, Loctite or Never Seize on the threads themselves on the, on the caliper, on anything that has to do with the brake system. Going to lube up the top slider pin channel, make sure it's nice and greased up. wipe off the excess before you tighten it down when it's all said and done these 14 millimeter bolts on the slider pins are going to be torqued down to 25 foot pounds you can see right here I'm using a six point socket actually I'm not using a six point but I would prefer you to use a six point socket to properly torque these down to 25 foot pounds Sometimes these slider pins do need to be replaced, and if those are needed, you can, again, find a link in the description below. 
if you do uh, have any friends or family that do their own maintenance on their vehicles or want to, make sure you tell them all about me too. I probably have a video that covers something for them. Don't forget to put the dust cover back in this little hole. Uh, that's your adjustment hole for the parking brake. That's pretty much it for this part of the brake job. I'm going to put this bolt back in the hose retainer. And after this, I will put my cap back on my fluid reservoir and I'll pump my brakes until I get pressure and then come back and make sure I don't have any leaks on this caliper. When I put my tire on, I will torque down uh, to factory specification as well. If this video helped you out, make sure you comment below with the year, make, model, vehicle that it helped you on. Hopefully one of these videos right here will help you out on another project. Please tell everybody about me and I'll see you on the next hopefully helpful video. Thanks for checking out Scotty's Hobbies.